Friday, we're especially thinking of a passage from Isaiah chapter 52, and then we move into what is such a monumental chapter in Scripture. Isaiah 53, the song of the suffering servant. Let's remember, everyone, that this most likely was written 800 years before Jesus was born in Bethlehem. God's Holy Spirit would move Isaiah to write this. See, my servant shall prosper. He shall be exalted and lifted up. It shall be very high. Just as there were many who were astonished at him, so marred was his appearance beyond human semblance and his form beyond that of mortals. So he shall startle many nations. Kings shall shut their mouths because of him. For that which had not been told them, they shall see. And that which they had not heard, they shall contemplate. Who has believed what we have heard? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he grew up before him like a young plant and like a root out of dry ground. He had no form or majesty that we should look at him, nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by others, a man of suffering and acquainted with infirmity. And as one from whom others hide their faces, he was despised. And we held him of no account. Surely he has borne our infirmities and carried our diseases. Yet we accounted him stricken, struck down by God and afflicted. He was wounded for our transgressions, crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the punishment that made us whole, and by his stripes we are healed. While we like sheep have gone astray, we've turned to our own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. Like a lamb that is led to the slaughter, and like a sheep that before its shears is silent, so he did not open his mouth. By a perversion of justice he was taken away. Who could have imagined his future? For he was cut off from the land of the living, stricken for the transgression of my people. They made his grave with the wicked and his tomb with the rich. Although he had done no violence and there was no deceit in his mouth. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. I was thinking yesterday as uh, at Cross of Glory, Pastor Todd chanted the uh, 22nd Psalm. The thing that really uh, that really made me pause for a moment was how close this psalm is to what is arguably the most familiar passage in all the Bible. As we think of the beloved 23rd Psalm, we look at yet another Psalm of David just before the 22nd Psalm and it's so very, very haunting. Just as we talked about Monday, Thursday as being so eerie and strange and mysterious. Oh, incidentally, everybody, this Psalm of David, it uh, written a thousand years before Jesus was born. The Holy Spirit writes the greatest of Israelite kings to pen this. My God, my God. Why have you forsaken me? Why so far from saying, saving even me? So far from the words of my 
groanings. My God, I cry out by day, but you do not answer. By night, but I find no rest. Yet you are the Holy One, enthroned on the praises of Israel. Our ancestors put their trust in you. They trusted and you rescued them. They cried out to you and were delivered. They trusted in you and were not put to shame. But as for me, I am a worm and not human. I'm scorned by all. I'm despised by the people. And all who see me laugh me to scorn. They curl their lips. They shake their heads. Uh, Trust in the Lord. Let the Lord deliver. Let God rescue him if God so delights in him. Yet you are the one who drew me forth from the womb and kept me safe on my mother's breast. I've been entrusted to you ever since I was born. You are my God when I was still in my mother's womb. Be not far from me. For trouble is near. There's no one to help. Many young bulls encircle me and strong bulls of Bashan surround me and they open wide their jaws at me and like a slashing and a roaring lion and I pour it out like water and all my bones are out of joint and my heart within my breast is melting wax and my strength is dried up like a potsherd and my tongue sticks to the roof of my mouth and you have laid me in the dust of death. And packs of dogs close in on me. A band of evildoers surrounds me. They have pierced my hands and my feet. I can count all my bones. They stare at me and they gloat. They divide my garments among them. For my clothing, they they cast dice. But you, O God, be not far away. O my help, hasten to my aid and deliver me from the sword, my life from the power of the dog and save me from the lion's mouth, from the horns of wild bulls. You have rescued me. I'll declare your name to my people. In the midst of the assembly, I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, give praise. All you of Jacob's line, give glory. Stand in awe of the Lord, all of you offspring of Israel. For the Lord does not despise nor abhor the poor in their poverty. Neither is the Lord's face hidden from them. But when they cry out, the Lord hears them. For you comes my praise in the great assembly. I will perform my vows in the sight of those who fear the Lord. The poor shall eat and be satisfied. And that those who seek the Lord give praise. May your hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord. All of the families of nations shall bow before God. For dominion belongs to the Lord who rules over the nations. Indeed, all who sleep in the earth shall bow down in worship. And all who go down to the dust, though they be dead, shall kneel before the Lord. Their descendants shall serve the Lord, whom they shall proclaim to generations to come. They shall proclaim God's deliverance to a a people yet unborn, saying to them, The Lord has acted. Let's uh, consider a passage in the New Testament, this book of Hebrews, chapter 10, verses 16 through 25. We don't know who specifically wrote the book of Hebrews. Well, we do. It's God's Holy Spirit. But we don't know a man or woman who penned these words. So let's consider Hebrews chapter 10, okay? 
And after the Holy Spirit says, This is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, says the Lord. I'll put my law in their hearts. And I will write them on their minds. He also adds, I remember their sins and their lawless deeds no more. Where there is forgiveness of these, there is no longer any offering for sin. Therefore, my friends, since we have confidence to enter the sanctuary by the blood of Jesus, by the new and living way that he opened for us through the curtain, that is through his flesh, and since we have a great high priest over the house of God, let us approach with a true heart in full assurance of faith, with our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast to the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who has promised is faithful. And let us consider how to Provoke one another to love and good deeds, not neglecting to meet together as is a habit of some, but encouraging one another all the more, especially as we see the day approaching. Word of God. Word of life. Thanks be to God. I invite you to stand as you are able for our gospel and reach into the pews and grab a hymnal. Um, we're going to begin our gospel portion by singing the first two verses of hymn number 335, Jesus Keep Me Near the Cross. The first two verses. <laughs> Jesus, keep me near the cross. There's a precious fountain, free to all a healing stream. Flows from Calvary's mountain. In the cross, in the cross, be my glory ever. Till my ransomed soul shall find rest beyond the river. Near the cross a trembling soul, love and mercy found me. There the bright and morning star sheds its beams around me in the cross in the cross be my glory ever till my ransomed soul shall find rest beyond the river this is the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. You can be seated for this portion. It is a longer gospel than usual. John writes, Then they took Jesus from Caiaphas to Pilate's headquarters. It was early in the morning. They themselves did not enter the headquarters so as to avoid ritual defilement and to be able to eat the Passover. So Pilate went out to them and said, What accusation do you bring against this man? They answered him, If this man were not a criminal, we would not have handed him over to you. Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and judge him according to your law. The Jews replied, we are not permitted to put anyone to death. This was to fulfill what Jesus had said when he indicated the kind of death he was to die. Then Pilate entered the headquarters again, summoned Jesus, and asked him, 
Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you ask this on your own, or did others tell you about me? Pilate replied, I am not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priests have handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were from this world, my followers would be, would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not from here. Pilate asked him, So you are a king? Jesus answered, You say that I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I came into the world, to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. Pilate asked him, What is truth? After he had said this, he went out to the Jews again and told them, I find no case against him, but you have a custom that I release someone for you at the Passover. Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? And they shouted, in reply, not this man, but Barabbas. Now, Barabbas was a bandit. Then Pilate took Jesus and had him flogged, and the soldiers wove a crown of thorns and put it on his head, and they dressed him in a purple robe. They kept coming up to him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews, and striking him on the face. Pilate went out again and said to them, Look, I am bringing him out to you to let you know that I find no case against him. So Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and a purple robe. Pilate said to them, Here is the man. When the chief priests and the police saw him, they shouted, Crucify him! Crucify him! Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and crucify him. I find no case against him. The Jews answered, We have a law, and according to that law he ought to die, because he has claimed to be the Son of God. Now when Pilate heard this, he was more afraid than ever. He entered his headquarters again and asked Jesus, Where are you from? But Jesus gave him no answer. Pilate therefore said to him, Do you refuse to speak to me? Do you not know that I have the power to release you and power to crucify you? Jesus answered him, You would have no power unless it had been given you from above. Therefore, the one who handed me over to you is guilty of a greater sin. From then on, Pilate tried to release him, but the Jews cried out, If you release this man, you are no friend of the emperor. Everyone who claims to be a king sets himself against the emperor. When Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus outside and sat on the judge's bench at a place called the Stone Pavement, or in Hebrew, Gebatha. I invite you to turn again in your hymnals to hymn 335, and we'll sing the last two verses, three and four. cross, O Lamb of God, bring its scenes before me. Help me walk from day to day with its shadow o'er me. In the cross, in the cross, be my glory ever. Till my ransomed soul shall find rest beyond the river. 
near the cross I'll watch and wait hoping trusting ever till I teach the golden strand just beyond the river near the cross near the cross be my glory ever till my ransomed soul shall find rest beyond the river our reading continues now it was the day of preparation for the passover and it was about noon Pilate said to the Jews, Here is your king. They cried out, Away with him! Away with him! Crucify him! Pilate asked them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priests answered, We have no king but the emperor. Then he handed Jesus over to them to be crucified. So they took Jesus and carrying the cross by himself. He went out to what is called the place of the skull, which in Hebrew is called Golgotha. There they crucified him and with him two others, one on either side, with Jesus between them. Pilate also had an inscription written and put on the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Many of the Jews read this inscription because the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city. And it was written in Hebrew and in Latin and in Greek. Then the chief priests of the Jews said to Pilate, Do not write the king of the Jews, but this man said, I am the king of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his clothes and divided them into four parts, one for each soldier. They also took his tunic. Now the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from the top. So they said to one another, let us not tear it, but cast lots for it to see who will get it. This was to fulfill what the scripture says, they divided my clothes among themselves, and for my clothing they cast lots. And that is what the soldiers did. Meanwhile, standing near the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing beside her, he said to his mother, Woman, here is your son. And then he said to the disciple, Here is your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his own home. After this, when Jesus knew that all was now finished, he said, in order to fulfill the scripture, I am thirsty. A jar full of sour wine was standing there, so they put a sponge full of the wine on a branch of hyssop and held it to his mouth. When Jesus received the wine, he said, It is finished. Then he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I invite you to keep your hymnals in hand. Um, if you've been with us this season of Lent for Wednesday worship, you know that we've used beloved hymns of the season and of the church as a meditation point, and I'm going to continue that today. I invite you to turn to page 353, 353, and we'll sing, Were You There? Were You There? Were 
Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Oh, sometimes it causes me to tremble, tremble tremble were you there when they crucified my lord were you there when they nailed him to the tree were you there when they nailed him to the tree causes me to tremble, tremble, tremble. Were you there when they nailed him to the tree? Were you there when they pierced him in the side? Were you there when they pierced him in the side? Oh, 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 sometimes it causes me to tremble, tremble, tremble. Were you there when they pierced him in the side? Were you there when the sun refused to shine? Were you there when the sun refused to shine? Oh, 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 oh sometimes it causes me to tremble, tremble, tremble. Were you there when the sun refused to shine? Were you there when they laid him in the tomb? Were you there when they laid him in the tomb? Oh, 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 oh. Sometimes it causes me to tremble, tremble, tremble. Were you there when they laid him in the tomb? One of my favorite devotional exercises and I recommend it to any of you, is to sit in a pew, maybe during those times in worship when you get distracted or when something's going on that's not holding your attention, or if it's just a quiet part of worship that invites meditation, is to sit in a pew and open up the hymnal and ponder the words of a hymn, any hymn, as we've heard and experienced during these Wednesdays of Lent, hymns can be wonderful meditations to help us to hear the gospel, to sing it, and to proclaim it. The words of hymns, sometimes poetry in their own right, proclaim Christ crucified and risen, proclaim Christ as Savior and Lord, savior of the world and proclaim the welcome that all people receive from christ to come and to follow and to live when wonderful words are matched with the right melody and phrasing i think it can be revelatory and i don't use that word lightly 
because revelation is part of why we sing why we join our voices and why great hymnody can be so meaningful and enriching and edifying you don't have to be a great musician to appreciate or enjoy a really good hymn were you there what we just sang is a great hymn were you there no none of us was there the writer wasn't there the only people we know were there were some brave women some soldiers and guards who had no choice but to be there and two criminals crucified with our Lord but it doesn't matter that the writer and we who sing this hymn weren't there because the hymn says that it says all that it needs to say really especially today especially today on Good Friday a day that causes us to tremble this beloved spiritual dates back to the 1800s in America. It was first published in 1899 as part of a collection of hymns called Old Plantation Hymns. But the song was probably written and sung much, much earlier than that. Little was done to write down any of the Negro spiritual songs until long after the Civil War ended right around the turn of the century. Slave Songs of the United States was published in 1867, and many spirituals were included in that collection. There were also many spirituals introduced to American public and really the international public by a group called the Jubilee Singers who sang around that period in the post-Civil War era. Um, the Jubilee Singers were a group of singers, black singers, out of Fisk University in Nashville in the 1870s. And it was nine singers from the university who formed this group to introduce the world to black spirituals, but also to raise money. Fisk University was suffering financially. It needed $20,000 in their day. So this group of singers decided to tour to raise money for their university. And it was amazingly successful. Their voices drew raves. You can imagine what nine singers with large voices could do with a catalog of Negro spirituals. They introduced the form of hymn spirituals to many white Americans and even an international audience. And during their tour, they introduced these hymns in cities that they visited where they could not even find a hotel room to stay in. Like many other spirituals, Were You There was not just a simple biblical narrative. While it did tell the basic story of the Lord's death, this spiritual and many others did something that was quite noteworthy to hymns, to hymnody as a writing and as a piece of music. They, they did something that not many European hymns in our hymnal did. Spirituals like Were You There? bent the distance of time and space, and they placed the storyteller there, along with everybody who hears the story in the hymn and all of us who sing with our voices. Were you there? No, but think about it. Were you there? You might have been. You might be. The cruelty that Christ suffered here is not celebrated in this hymn. It's told, but it's told in a way that deeply affects the writer, the singers, the storyteller, and all who hear it. Oh, it 
causes me to tremble, tremble, tremble. It's a deeply frightening song. A deeply frightening song of praise, but the terror and the horror of Christ's death are laid bare as he was laid bare. The terror and the horror of these events of Good Friday are the subject of lament, the subject of shared pain. The song told of a pain that slaves or descendants of slaves might know all too well themselves. Christ's body was crucified. He was nailed to a tree. He was pierced in his side. He was laid in a tomb. The sun refused to shine. That was a lament of a person wrongly killed, publicly assaulted and unjustly murdered by a crowd. The song of one hung on a tree it sounds like a lynching. The earliest written version of this song had four verses, the first four verses. The questions have a fifth one that we sung that was added later. Um, I've heard other versions with different endings to the song, but the first version published had four verses. Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Were you there when they nailed him to the tree? When they pierced him in the side? When the sun refused to shine? Is it a hopeless lament? Well, the words are bleak enough. Jesus is crucified. He's nailed to a tree. He's pierced in his side, and the sun refused to shine. It's a Good Friday song because it leaves the singer or the listener there. It stops time and ends when Jesus died. The sky went black, and Jesus was dead crucified, hung on a tree, lynched and pierced. The words are bleak and horrific. I can only imagine that black people, slaves and former slaves, descendants living in fear of persecution felt that pain. Perhaps in the singing and in the hearing, they actually felt their own scars lamented their own persecution and torture. Perhaps the voices who sang of Christ's misery and pain related in a matter and in a manner that we cannot ever understand or empathize. We don't know hatred, bigotry, or murder like they do. I can only imagine. And yet we sing the simple and direct words that are deep with feeling. Simple and direct words about abuse, persecution, and death. It's a simple and direct story of Christ's death. And it's also a story that we participate in. Were we there? No. But we sing as if we were. For slaves and for newly freed slaves, this was their experience too. Persecution and death were always a possibility. The sin of Christ's treatment and the sin of racism meet in these words. The sin of Christ's treatment and racism's treatment of an entire ethnic group meet in this song. Were you there? is a song of slavery. Because it is a song also of Jesus, it's also a song of freedom. When one lives with death so real and so possible, it helps to sing about it. 
it's sometimes good to sing the song of your enemy. Remember, we started Ash Wednesday singing songs of mortality, songs of death, the songs of the enemy. Singing the songs of an enemy removes some of its power. Singing the songs of an enemy hits them back with their own words. Because this is a hymn of slavery, it is also a hymn of Jesus, and it is a hymn both of death and life. Hymns about Jesus are always about life. Today, we don't sing it with the feelings that the writer had. We can't do that. I don't think anyone here can do that. Because our experience is different. Yet we can feel it, not only because we sing the words together, but we sing the melody. Not only because of the words, but the words are matched to such a melody. And the melody helps us feel it. It's a very simple, repetitive melody. Like the words, really, which are also simple and repetitive. The slow melody begins with a few notes. Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Three, four notes, maybe? The words repeat as the patterns of the notes repeat, but higher the second time. And then it gets really dramatic. It reaches a peak. Oh, 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 oh. sometimes, well, it's almost like a scream. Oh, 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 that's the highest note of the song. And then a slowdown happens. Sometimes it causes me to tremble, tremble, tremble. Repetition again. Effective. 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 It's a comforting way to come down from the scream, really. And then with more repetition, the song takes us back to Jesus. Repeats the first line with a melodic resolution. My scream, my trembling is both couch and relieved in Christ's own screams and trembles. Were you there? No. But Jesus was. There it is. We weren't there, but Jesus was. You'll note that a lot of Christ's story wasn't told in this hymn. Were you there when they crucified my Lord? When they nailed him to the tree? When they pierced him in the side? When the sun refused to shine? A significant portion of the story is missing from that first published version. It's been changed. Sometimes verses have ad been added on. I've sung this hymn with the, uh, with the final verse being an Easter verse. Were you there when God raised him from the dead? Right? But that's Easter. Today is Good Friday. Today is the day that they nailed him to the tree. They pierced his side. Today, the sun refused to shine. 
Other spirituals tell about Easter, many of them, and other hymns sing of resurrection. But the songs of slavery and the words that they sing are not all Easter songs. There's a time for Easter. Today is not that time. There's a time for freedom, but today is not that time. There's a time for liberation. Today is not that time. That time will come and the sun will shine again. That time will come. That time will come. Today, though, today, we tremble, tremble, tremble. Hymn of the day is number 338. you to join in prayer a very old prayer called the bidding prayer our church prays this every good Friday let us pray brothers and sisters for the Holy Church throughout the world 
Almighty and eternal God, you have shown your glory to all nations in Jesus Christ. By your Holy Spirit, guide the church and gather it throughout the world. Help it to preserve, persevere in faith. Proclaim your name and bring the good news of salvation in Christ to all people. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And let us pray for Elizabeth and James, our bishops, for all servants of the church, and for all the people of God. Almighty and eternal God, your spirit guides the church and makes it holy. Strengthen and uphold our bishops, pastors, other ministers, and lay leaders. Keep them in health and safety for the good of the church and help each of us in our various vocations to do faithfully the work to which you have called us. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for those preparing for baptism. Almighty and eternal God, you continue to bless the church. Increase the faith and understanding of those preparing for baptism. Give them new birth as your children and keep them in the faith and communion of your holy church. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray for our sisters and brothers who share our faith in Jesus Christ. Almighty and eternal God, you give your church unity. Look with favor on all who follow Jesus your Son. Make all the baptized one in the fullness of faith and keep us united in the fellowship of love. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for those who do not share our faith in Jesus Christ. Almighty and eternal God, gather into your embrace all those who call out to you under different names. Bring an end to interreligious strife and make us more faithful witnesses of the love made known to us in your Son. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray for those who do not believe in God. Almighty and eternal God, you created humanity so that all may long to know you and find peace in you. Grant that all may recognize the signs of your love and grace in the world and in the lives of Christians and gladly acknowledge you as the one true God. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for God's creation. Almighty and eternal God, you are the creator of a magnificent universe. Hold all the worlds in your arms and your care and bring all things to fulfillment in you. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray for those who serve in public office. Almighty and eternal God, you are the champion of the poor and oppressed. In your goodness, give wisdom to those in authority so that all people may enjoy justice, peace, freedom, and a share in the goodness of your creation. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for those in need. Almighty and eternal God, you give strength to the weary and new courage to those who have lost heart. Heal the sick, comfort the dying, give safety to travelers, free those unjustly deprived of liberty, and deliver your world from falsehood, hunger, and disease. Hear the prayers of all who call on you in any trouble that they may have the joy of receiving your help in their need. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
finally, let us pray for all those things for which our Lord would have us ask. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Behold the life-giving cross on which was hung the Savior of the world. Behold the life-giving cross on which was hung the Savior of the world. Behold the life-giving cross on which was hung the Savior of the world. You're all invited to come forward. Now we're gonna have our musicians play some music. You can come forward and light a candle at the font and at the cross.
I invite you to stand as you're able. We glory in your cross, O Lord, and we praise your holy resurrection. For by your cross, joy has come into the world. May God be merciful and bless us. May the light of God's face shine upon us. Let your way be known upon the earth, your saving health among the nations. We glory in your cross, O Lord, and we praise your holy resurrection. For by your cross, joy has come into the world. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. May God bless blessing and may all the ends of the earth stand in awe. We glory in your cross, O Lord, and we praise your holy resurrection, for by your cross joy has come into the world. I invite you to join once again singing hymn number 353. you there when they crucified my Lord? Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Oh, 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 oh sometimes it causes me to tremble 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 were you there when they crucified my lord were you there when they nailed him to the tree were you there when they nailed him to the tree oh, 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 oh sometimes it causes me to tremble 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 were you there when they nailed him to the tree Were you there when they pierced him in the side? Were you there when they pierced him in the side? Oh, 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 oh sometimes it causes me to tremble 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 were you there when they pierced him in the side were you there when the sun refused to shine were you there when the sun refused to shine oh, 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 oh sometimes it causes me to tremble 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 were you there when the sun refused to shine were you there when they laid him in the tomb when they laid him in the tomb oh sometimes it 
causes me to tremble, tremble, tremble. Were you there when they laid him in the tomb? We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. By your holy cross, you have redeemed the world.